regression was first used in 1805 by Legendre, who doesn't have a nice uh, painting of him on Wikipedia, so I picked the one for the second person to use it in 1807, Gauss. So that's more than 200 years ago. This has been around for a really long time, and it's still a really popular standard approach to machine learning today. So let's have a look. For our example, we will be making smoothies. Every smoothie will have one cup of plain yogurt, one secret ingredient, and a bunch of random food dye so that you cannot tell what is in there. I blend it up, I serve it to you, and your goal now is to shout at me, what are the calories in this smoothie? Go. What do I hear? 100. 100. Going once, going twice. 300. 300. 500. Now, I'm doing a little test here. Seeing who's got the strongest aptitude in the audience for machine learning. <laughs> because the machine learning attitude is not the attitude of perfectionism of think carefully and get the answer right on the first go and don't even try it unless it's going to be perfect. No, the attitude is go for it, see what happens, get it wrong, because you're going to have to do it over and over again. You're going to fail, fall down over and over again, pick yourself up, try again until finally it works. And you have to try something to know what to do next. And so if you're too afraid to start, you tend not to do well in applied machine learning. So those of you who are brave enough to just go for it, even though you didn't know the right answer, yeah, that was what's going to get me to move to the next slide and give you more information, and we'll be able to iterate towards correct together. OK, so you've unlocked the next slide. Turns out this was, what was the secret ingredient? 58 delicious grams of sardines <laughs> with 265 calories in there, lovely. I see you don't want to drink it. Fine, I make you a different one. Guess the calories now. 80, 400. 180. 180. All right, I'm hearing some more responses and rumblings. Now let me tell you what was in here. 50 grams of not delicious waffles that I've shown you in the picture. No, no, the raw stuff, waffle mix. And this is actually an homage to a standard hazing experience that happens on the fifth floor of the Google office here in New York, which is uh, most new Googlers, myself included, I've done this. Have you done this, Sam? You walk up and you see this delicious smoothie and you try it and it is not a smoothie. So standard newbie hazing experience here. Okay, so you don't want to drink this one? Fine, I make you a third one. But before I make you guess, I'm going to give you a little more information. This is the 16th smoothie that I've made, and here are the 15 previous calorie amounts. Your first reaction to this should be not trying to read it, but instead stamping your foot and saying, I'm a human. I don't dad numbers up. That's what machines are for. Indeed. Correct. So the machine's going to help us out and summarize them. And we find out that the average is 237 and the middle thing is 240. Have a guess now as to the calories of this one. 237, I'm hearing, 238, 240. Notice how your range has narrowed a whole lot as I give you more information. That's going to be key to our discussion. OK, I'll go for 237. Ah, it turns out to be 88 grams of quiche Lorraine clocking in at a whopping 445 calories and proving to us that any liquid diet is beatable. <laughs> so how did we do? We had an underestimate of 208 calories with that strategy. And can we do better? Well, maybe it would help to have the weight of the secret ingredient. So what we'll do as analysts is we'll make a little plot and we'll have the weight from 0 to 200 grams on the x-axis and calories from 0 to 500 on the y-axis. And as we look at this, we ask ourselves, is there anything going on or is weight completely useless here? What do you say? Completely useless? Something to it. And since there's something to it, maybe we'll go ahead and we'll try it out, shall we? And regression is about putting lines through stuff, so why don't we put a line through it? 
You like that line? Good line? <laughs> we missed. Uh, where should we put this line? By the way, those who forgot how lines work, uh, here's a handy cheat sheet. The recipe, the model, is simply intercept plus slope times the weight. So we'll have two numbers here in red that we have to find or discover, that determine where the line goes, and then we pop the weight in there and read the calories off of it. So that's what we're dealing with, straightforward stuff. So you don't like my line? Okay, fair enough. How about that one? You don't like that one? This one? It's a tough crowd. That one? No. This one? You look offended. <laughs> Why do you look offended by this? Because <laughs> let me remind you of something real quick. This right here, this is your previous model. And now you're offended. <laughs> but before, you were very happy to just guess 237 every time. I think 237 and zero times the weight means I ignore the weight and say 237 every time. And you were so fine to use it then. Check your feature engineering privilege. <laughs> what is feature engineering? That's when we create inputs that we might use to learn from. Stuff that might inform our solution. And when we have a feature that we might use, suddenly we can do better. So that's kind of going to be the point here. As we get information that's going to be relevant to solving this thing, we expect to do better and better, and it's going to be up to us to think about what information might be worth putting into the system in the first place. Okay, so let's do better. If we can do better, we're going to find a line that's as close to the points as possible, because you seemed offended when I wasn't doing that. Fine. So we better define a notion of an error. What's an error? It's just the point minus the line. The truth minus what we were saying we should predict. And because we all have type A personalities here, we hate errors. So we are going to minimize a function of these errors. And that is going to be the score for how this thing performs. And a good score is to have fewer errors. And we will use the RMSC here. And this thing is very creatively named. It's actually the recipe for calculating it backwards. Get the error, square the error, take the mean or average, and take the square root of that. Root mean squared error, or RMSE. OK. Or you could just think of the RMSE as the calories were off by on average. Not technically correct, but good enough for government work. We're off by about 85 calories on average, and that'll do. That'll, that's fine for, for a morning. OK, so now we're off by 85, and we want to be off by fewer. So let's see if we can just jiggle those two red parameters there in the recipe to make things better. What do you want to do? Maybe you want to increase the slope a bit. OK, that's getting better. Good. How about we increase the slope a little more? Meh, not so much better. Maybe now we want to move the intercept down, so let's do that. And what we could do is we could continue tinkering with these two numbers in red, with slow, boring tinkering, or we could get on with it. So what are our options? Just play by hand with those two numbers, which is what we were doing, or we could use calculus, but who even does calculus anymore, so old school. Or we could just use an optimization algorithm to get us the answer immediately. So what does an optimization algorithm do? It says, for this setting, you are trying, what's your goal? You are trying to get this function right here to be as low as possible. Let me figure out for you what settings on those two parameters that I'm allowed to play with give me the best possible performance here. And then it outputs you that answer. And that's going to be in the heart of every machine learning algorithm. So we're going to need to know what the scoring is, what the goal is. And then it's going to figure out where to set the uh, free parameters in the recipe based on that. OK, great. And we have come a long way. I'm impressed with us. Nice. Uh, let's look at Quiche Lorraine, though. It's taunting us. We did not predict Quiche Lorraine well. How did we do? Better. Our underestimate has gone down. OK. Can we do even better? Can we? Well, there ain't no such thing as a free lunch, she says at Google. <laughs> to do better, we actually need something else. So what is it going to take? We need 
Any guesses? More information, exactly. That was actually very nicely put because that says two things at once. More information in the sense of just more of the same data or more information in the sense of other kinds of information that might be helpful. In other words, more features. Features in this setting refers to variables, attributes in other settings. So I'm going to be generous and I'm going to give you the fat percentage. How do you feel about that? Is that going to be helpful? All right, so let's see. So this is what we were working with before. This is our form, and we just had to muck about with these two parameters here. And we used an optimization algorithm to set them. And notice, who here has taken a stats course of some kind? Yeah, you probably saw regression. It was an entirely different story in that course, the way that you were going about it. It was all this other stuff about what it means and p-values and t-tests. None of that is relevant here. All we are trying to do is optimize that function to set these two numbers so that the difference between the calories predicted and the actual calories is as good as possible. That's it. That's all there is to it here. Much, much simpler than what the stats course did. So there we go. Those are our answers. Lovely. Now, it's not going to be a line anymore if we add fat percentage. It's a bird, it's a plane. Same structure, just we had another one of these right here. And now the only pertinent thing for you to realize is that there are three widgets to tinker with. Nice. And plotting it there, we need to add a dimension. I can't make heads or tails of this. So a little shout out to better plotting. How about adding color? Okay, uh, still not enough because I can't see what's going on. The color is more calories, gets redder. But I, I can't see what's going on with this fat percentage and weight plane. So, ah, okay, now I can kind of see what's going on. And if you're used to looking at these things, you kind of see the punchline that's coming. But even if you don't see it, let's find out what happens if we run the algorithm. So again, our job is to get those three numbers to be as good as possible. We have our three options. I pick the getting on with it. And so we have this mosquito netting fitted through our data for us. What is it trying to do? Get as close to our points as possible. And those are the numbers that do it. Kish Lorraine is still taunting us. How did we do? We are now off by 47 calories on average. Before, it was 49. I don't know. I'm not feeling it. I had to double the number of ingredients into my recipe, and all I get for that is this measly tiny improvement? Maybe after all, this isn't such a promising direction to go in. Maybe I would prefer the simpler model, but of course, don't worry about that too much. You can always try both of them in a new data set and see which one is working better. So how are we doing so far? Using only the mean, there's our underestimate. With simple linear regression, that means one ingredient. We've improved. And only a slight improvement with multiple linear regression, that means more than one input into the model. All right, I'll take a question. Um, can you do a model that has uh, fat percentage times weight? That's, that's actually how much fat content it is. Can you do a model that does fat percentage times weight? Absolutely. And there's a good reason to think about doing that, like the bit about the water amount of the secret ingredient. We didn't even cover that, right? If I just add, if I just dilute the, uh, the secret ingredient, I can mess about with the fat percentage. So, The, the reasoning, that's a good one, it's a good one. So, the, the, the reasoning around whether or not you should go ahead and try a model like that is, does it take a long time to try it? If no, just do it. Even if you don't have as solid of a logical argument, try it anyway. You can always try something like that, and yes, it's very, very easy to adjust the method, to input something like that. You just make the um, feature by multiplying them first, and in it goes, job done. So certainly could try that. 
Okay, can we do even, even, even better, even better than that? Sure, how about if I'm really generous? This is non-alcoholic, and I'm gonna give you the fat in grams, the carbohydrate in grams, and the protein in grams of our secret ingredient. Does anyone wanna spoil the punchline for us? Who knows about nutrition? Let's have it. Nine, four, and four, the magic numbers. Because we as humanity have figured out a whole lot about nutrition, and we already know the answer. Well, it doesn't matter if we know the answer, why don't we see if we can recover that same answer from this data set with machine learning. Uh, but yeah, let's hope that our final answer is gonna look something like that answer. So here we go. This thing is now not a plane anymore. It's now a hyperplane, so let's go ahead and plot it. <laughs> let's not. There's no real reason to be plotting it here because at the end of the day, the way that we check how well we're doing, how we get that score that we're optimizing, it happens the same way no matter what is in here. All we need to know about is that we take what's predicted, we compare it with the truth, and we see how we did. And inside this thing, however beastly it is, there are some numbers that we are allowed to tinker with, and we'll use an optimization algorithm to do the tinkering for us, and hopefully some researcher somewhere has written that optimization code so we don't have to. So that's a much better thing to spend your time on if you're in a research division or a research in industry or a research division in academia. Good, and they have, and so we don't have to worry about it. All we need to know is four things to tinker with. We'll still assess the results the same way. Doesn't matter what's there. So let's get on with it and use that optimization algorithm, which we don't need to know how it works. And there you go. How did we do? Nine, four, four, something like that. Looks pretty good to me. Uh, FDA, by the way, confirms what you say. This is a quote from their website. Carbohydrate provides four calories per gram, protein four, and fat nine. So uh, very good general knowledge. What on earth is this 143 thing? Well, we ask ourselves, if there is no fat, no carbs, and no protein, if our secret ingredient was water, what's left? Well, there was yogurt in there every time. Now, it turns out our yogurt base had 145 calories. We're predicting 143. as a little bit of a mismatch, so maybe there was some error in our data. But you know what? Our score is getting pretty good. Not perfect, but pretty good. We're off by four calories on average when it used to be 47. And this is again a shout out to feature engineering. The fact that you had the knowledge about this domain and realized that having the weights in grams of all of these things was going to be useful, that is the reason that you get a model that's this good in the end. It pays off. You can convert your domain knowledge into good solutions. And how did we do in the end? Our underestimate for quiche Lorraine is only four calories. I say good enough, let's drink it. <laughs>